What's up, everybody? It is your sis and your friend, Crystal Cross, right here on the Morning Jam Podcast, where we talk about any and everything, personal, old snaps and claps. It's a dang good day to talk about a few things. So let's get into it. What's up, everybody? It is your sis and your friend, Crystal Whitaker, right here on the Morning Jam Podcast with a special guest, my sister. I'm so excited. Christina Lockett, she is. Oh, my goodness, y'all. This woman right here is an award-winning author and media personality. Welcome, sis. All right. I'm excited to be here with you. I know, right? It's been like, I'm so excited. It's been like a couple, what, a year? Maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Because of the COVID and everything. (laughs) How's that going for you? (laughs) It's been a challenge. Definitely a challenge because I'm a school teacher as well. And so, um. We never really did virtual. We were face-to-face from the beginning. We did have to um, maybe have a few times where we were out just because some students were exposed. But overall, it's been face-to-face. It's been a challenge. Um, My father actually passed away um, from complications to COVID-19. So it's definitely been a a rough year. Oh, I'm so sorry, Christina. Yeah. I wish I can just hug you right now. Okay. I'm gonna right. Virtual hug. hug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say after that. My heart's broken now. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, um, my father and my brother passed away like four days apart. But, you know, what? yeah. So, you know, one thing about it is when you really believe the word of God, you have to practice yeah. what you preach, you know. And so that's what I've been standing on and friends and family have been lifting us up in prayer. And I can honestly say that is what has been keeping us prayer. Wow. Wow. Well, my prayers are with you and your family, sis. I love you so much. Um, Love you. Thank you. I know, right? It was definitely an honor just to even meet you at first, you know, first sight. I got your book. I mean, (laughs) it was just an amazing event at the Spin Awards, what, 2019 is one? Yeah, right, right. Um, So, yeah. All right. But this interview is about you, sis. So let's get into it. So let the people know who you are and what you do. Well, um, one thing, like I just mentioned, I am an educator. I teach upper middle school science. Um, I have a radio show, the Christina Lockett Show. It was originally called A Message of Hope, um, but we expanded the radio broadcast. And so when, once we did that shift, I changed it to the Christina Lockett Show. And I have three great co-hosts. Um, and we're live every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time on Raise the Praise of 100. And for this summer, since I'll be out you know, from teaching, I'm going to do a special uh, Sunday broadcast. It's gonna, going to be called summer Sundays and I'm really looking forward to that oh, that's because awesome. yeah, I'm looking that. forward to it because it's going to be like a different format the Christina Lockett show you know we do interviews inspirational interviews I mean we play gospel music of course but that summer Sundays is going to be more of a of a churchy kind of like broadcast um yeah. you know so I'm kind of looking forward to that and like you stated earlier I am an author so I've released four books Wow. Wow. So how did all of this begin with you being in the media and even becoming an author? How did all that begin for you? Well, I've been preaching for um, this year is going to be 17 years. I have been preaching the word of God. And about six, almost seven years ago, the Lord just really placed it on my heart to go ahead and release a book, my first book. And in the process of promoting that first book, um, I had the opportunity to meet um Clark Garrison and Joyce White um, from Survival Radio Christian Network. And Clark reached out to me about, you know, hosting my own radio broadcast. And of course, I just took that to the Lord in prayer because that was something I never thought about doing. And um, I did it. (laughs) And Clark (laughs) trained me. Um, He trained me. He prepared me. Um, He has since passed away. But he, he just got me started. He really mentored me. And from there, you know, the wheels just began to turn and God was like, this is an extension of your ministry. And so with the first book, I released more books. And now um, I just celebrated six years of radio ministry. So, 
You wow. know, sometimes you don't even know some of the gifts that you have until someone calls it out and stirs it up for you, because that's something I never thought I, I, w- I would be doing, you know, and being a blessing to others in that way. Right, right. I know my brother uh, actually pulled me out of my shy box and just said, hey, Crystal, either you're going to do it or you ain't, you know, you might fail, but at least you learned something, at least you tried, Mm -hmm. you know, so, and I was like, okay, um, I'll try it. (laughs) So he actually, you're good at it. Well, thank you. Uh, You know, I don't pop my collar. I just give all God to, you know, glory to God and I just let him lead and continue to guide me because sometimes I get Christina so nervous. I'd be like, oh my God. He was like, (laughs) it's the Center Awards. I mean, it was more like a a homecoming thing because it's about a lot of people there and it was just fun. But when I go to different other events, it's more like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a lot of pressure. (laughs) So, uh, and I didn't know what to expect on some uh, events that I was going to. So what would you say been in it so long where people that's really wanted to start on it and and just really put their foot into like uh, media, even uh, uh, correspondent out, you know, and doing interviews with other people, what would you say to uh, someone that's trying to reach that goal? Well, definitely you don't want to do it just because you have to really know that this is something that you're confident in. You have right. to realize that this is something that you really want to do. Um, because I think sometimes people do stuff just because they see other people doing it and they think to themselves, oh, well, I could do that. Because even since um, I've been in radio and I, I do television as well, all of a sudden I see just people popping up, you know, starting to do it. And I'm like, this is not for everybody. <laughs> You know, it's not for you to just say, okay, this is something I'm going to do. You have to really know that um, this is something that God has called you to do, especially as it relates to radio and television ministry, because it is a difference. Because even though there's an entertainment aspect of it, at the end of the day, are you really reaching somebody, ministering to somebody? Are you helping them? Um, You know, are people motivated? Are they excited? Are they encouraged? Those are the type of questions that you want to ask. And if you feel strongly that you want to do it, go ahead and step out, you know, and look for a mentor, especially if this is a new arena for you. Yeah. You know, go and get you a mentor and and do it. Just do it. (laughs) You know, for me, Christina, I had to like, uh, like get confident for myself, like you said. And I was like, man. I had to sit back like, Crystal, you can do it. You know, I was even like in the mirror, you can do this, girl. Like, pump myself up. You can get me. I was like, you can do this, girl. You got it. So I definitely, and definitely you have to have a personality. You have to be very fun with it. You have to have a positive attitude. Some people you run into, you be like, "Mm -mm, I don't even like your vibe. So, (laughs) and if you come into, you know, artists sometimes really don't even want to come to a person if they see like a bad vibe. Exactly right on past you and go on Mm -hmm. to the next person that's got that great vibe that they're looking for to you know because they don't want you know they might you may say something wrong to them so (laughs) has it ever been a point in time where you have encountered been encountered with an artist that you interviewed or someone even an entrepreneur or author or magazine person that you come in contact with that was not on good terms or good vibes coming to you to interview how did you handle that You know what? So far, I have not had that experience. Um, And I'm glad that I haven't. Pretty much all of our guests, people that I've encountered, even face to face, like red carpet interviews, have been really gracious, you know. Mm -hmm. And as far as the radio broadcast, people are so transparent. Like they will say some things that I'm like, oh, you you telling that, you know, but just so open and so honest and so transparent, you know, even some people that I actually know their story, like really, really know their story. Yeah. I may ask them up front, like, how much are you willing to share? But God just kind of gives us that grace and that mercy. People will share more than you even expect them to share, you know, and I believe that that's just favor. It's just favor, you know, and it's not that I want them to tell all their business or anything, but when they share their story and their testimony, it's really being a blessing to the listening audience because somebody listening is probably experiencing the same thing. And we want people to know like, yeah, you might see this glory, but yeah, you don't know the story. And so you may get an opportunity to know the story and be like, okay, well, if they did it, I can do it too. Right, right. So in your, uh, you know, like, 
you know, during your show, during your uh, your books and stuff. So what would you say to someone that's really trying to write a book that's getting it, you know, just really want to start it? You know, for me, Christina, I would love to write a book. Okay. Um, because I, I would love to write. So what would you say even to me on how to even get started on writing uh, the first book? One of the things that I would encourage people to do is, um, as an educator, there we tend to uh, plan what they say backwards. We plan backwards, meaning if there's a test or if there's an objective, we look at that first and mm -hmm. then plan accordingly. So I feel like that's the same way we're writing a book. You have to decide, what do you want people to get from this book? Is it a self-help right. book? Is it an inspirational book? You know, what, what's the goal, the end goal? And once you make a decision as to what you want your audience to receive, then start working backwards. Meaning, I know this is the end goal. This is what I want my reader to receive once they finish my book. And then go ahead and, and work backwards. You know, if you need to do an outline, do an outline. Um, and I feel like this as well. Don't be so strict on yourself. Like it's got to be a cookie cutter A B C D. It might not work like that for you. We all write differently. You know, you might start off with Z and, and then go to D. It's okay. Just get it out, write it out, and then you can go back and line it up chronologically you know, sequentially, you know, then you can go back and put it in order. Sometimes right. you just need to let it go, just write it out, knowing what your end goal is, then go back in and begin to edit, restructure, rewrite if you need to. And um, I feel like it would be less intimidating if you do that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That sounds good. Um, I may have to try that because I'm <laughs> definitely I'm interested in writing, starting to write in a book, uh, just about you know my personal experiences and thing that just happened. So, um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Do it, <laughs> do, it. do it. Um, so with your your books, you say you're on book number four. I've written four, so I'm just waiting for the timing that I will release book number five. I really feel okay. like I already know what that one is going to be about, but I'm just waiting, right timing, but I've, I've done four. So my first book was more of yeah, a personal give testimony. Give the morning jam audience just a little bit piece of what number five book is going to be named or is it going to be about? <laughs> I really feel like it's going to be about favor because we talk about okay. favor, but I don't feel like we really have an understanding of what favor is. Sure. And God has shown so much favor throughout the years um, that I feel like I want to write about favor. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You heard it first right here on the Morning Jam <laughs> podcast. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'm sorry for and and uh you know interrupting you earlier. So what were you going to say about? No, I book? was just saying that my first book was more of an inspirational book of my personal testimony, and then okay. the second one was a journal, and that journal pretty much um paired with the first book, and my third book was called Permission to Pray. That book was more about prayer. And mm -hmm. my end goal for that book is I wanted people to be confident in prayer and know that they can pray about anything and mm -hmm. everything. And my last book, the fourth book, is about parenting. It's called Parenting, A Message of Hope. And that book, I don't necessarily tell people how to parent, but I just want them to open their eyes and look at the long-term goals as it relates to parenting. And right. one, of the chapters, one of the chapters in that book is called Parenting um, Your Best Self. You know, you got to be whole, you have to be healed, you have to be delivered so that you don't, you don't um, put your unforgiveness or any of your uh, issues on to your child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and praying even for your child and stirring up their gifts. And um, I talk about co-parenting, you know, especially people that either went through divorce or perhaps they were never married and they, and they have a child together. You, you can't co-parent with a lot of unforgiveness and animosity. You know, right. you have to let those things go so you can be good parents. So I tap into all of that and from a biblical perspective. And I also share my personal experience as well. And that book, you know, well, all of the books, you know, they get good reviews, but parenting, people really like that book and they buy it, buy it in books and they give it out at baby showers and <laughs> oh wow. You know, and then you know, when they know somebody is really going through something as it relates to their child. Or maybe with the father and the mother, they like, you know, you need to read this book. You know, I had a grandparent, actually two. I had two grandparents tell me, they said, I wish I had a book like this when I was raising my children. And oh, I'm like, wow. 
Thank you, Jesus. You know, that was the goal. Yes. Wow. That is the goal, like to reach the heart like that. That's amazing. Yes. I'm proud of you, sis. Thank um, you. Thank you. I definitely consider you family, sister. You are you stuck like stuck with me like gorilla glue. <laughs> I, I can use that because you're just funny. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I'm so honored uh, to have you on the Morning Gym podcast, uh, Christina. I, I mean, when I met you, your presence, your, you know, your, your spirit is just so, just welcoming to me. Thank I you. I was like, okay, so I need this woman in my life. I need her in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Thank the, you. And the thing so was, it's not like that. It was just, um, like, okay, I see a person that's doing something. It was a person like. I'm, I'm learning from you. And that's what, you know, some women need that. We when they know, connect with you, you want to be down to earth. Said it one more time? Yes. Yes. Down to earth and you want to make a connection with people. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and I love it because, you know, for for me, it was like that. It was genuine. I, it was just a friendly conversation that we had and it was mm -hmm. just, it was growth from there. And that's what a lot of women right now I feel is reaching for. They have these, these yes. friends that will turn on them one minute and then they want to be friends with them the next. It's just time to be just that real with one another as women and just really, uh, you know, promote yes. and, and grow and just really push uh, each other to just be amazing women and not just fight and bicker and fight and, and all that. So uh, yes. for me, Christina, is yes. there a point in your career of your what is it you said 17 or 18 years now and radio yes for preaching yeah yes yeah. And, and ministry six, how, how... six years in six years in media ministry though and i'm okay. um, going into my 17 year would, would actually just preaching the gospel that's awesome i love that so ha is has there been a point in in all of this together where you're saying okay christina it's time to just take a break and just work on me personally and just put this to the side for just a minute have there ever been a time for you but like that well you know what actually yeah yeah definitely um there was a point where I was thinking that just my plate was too full and mm -hmm. I was about to take some things off of my plate and right when I had that thought and I actually began to pray about it I found out I was nominated for several spin awards that was the first spin awards um because I think I remember one that the sixth, fifth year and it was like God was saying no if you're gonna take something off your plate <laughs> not this you know um but God he 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 really put me in a position where I'm able to be a school teacher but I teach you know for a private Jewish school so I'm not there in the early mornings I don't have to be there until like later in the day I still teach six classes but I don't have to be there till later in the day. So it's like I have that first part of the morning for myself and for ministry, mm -hmm. you know? And then at the end of the day, I can focus on, you know, God and ministry and writing or, you know, helping people. And so like God began to balance my schedule. You know, God will do it for you. When you have an assignment on your life and God wants you mm -hmm. to complete that assignment, he will orchestrate your footsteps. And that's what God right. did for me, you know? So I wouldn't be overwhelmed. So I wouldn't be burnt out and so that I could give God my best, you know? Right. So what would you say to someone that's out there now, if they're a male or female, just really battling if they should take something off their plate or just leave it there, even though they're battling a full plate? Of, really begin to seek God. I would ask you to really seek God and pray because some things that we're doing that's keeping us all so busy, God didn't call us to do. Wow. Yeah. You're just doing it. And God didn't really tell you to do that. And so you have to begin to say, is this my assignment? Is this a part of my purpose and destiny? And if it's not, take it off. Take it off. Because I think sometimes we feel obligated. If somebody asks us to do something, we just quickly say yes. No, don't be so quick to say yes. Sometimes you have to say no. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, I mean, for me, it was at point. At one point, I was saying yes to everything. I'm like, oh, oh okay, this is a, gr a great opportunity. Yes, I'm going to do it. Oh, yes, I'll do the red carpet for this. Yes, I'll go. Over it. And I'm like, by the end of the week or by the end of the month, I was so drained and just right. so tired. And I'm like, okay, KJ, which is my son, 
just go over here, son. I'll, I will do this later. And then I don't have any energy for my family, any right. energy for, for just me personally to just really take care of me. So mm -hmm. it, what it happened, it was time to say, okay, Crystal, let's move some things off the plate. Yes. You're wearing yourself thin mm -hmm. and you're not going to grow because you're all over the place. A lot of yes. people, are just especially for me, I find myself running here and there. And I just then become settled and just work on one thing at a time to complete. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I definitely it was a learning experience for me. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, God, thank you. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> thank well, you so much thing... for, for the growth. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> one thing I learned some years ago is that the enemy, if he can't slow you down, he will speed you up. Oh, and so if he's, so then we'll see ourselves doing any and everything and moving so fast and moving so quickly. And we're actually missing what God wants us to do. So you have to be careful. You know, you think, oh, he's just slowing me down. He doesn't always slow people down. Sometimes he'll speed you up and cause you to miss the mark. So you got to be really careful. So um, I know we're going to change the subject here for just a little bit. Okay. And I know you were just at an amazing birthday bash. Yes. Oh, Tommy, how was that for you? <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. So um, our radio broadcast, the Christina Lockett Show, was invited to help celebrate nephew Tommy's um, birthday oh, party. Uncle, you know, <laughs> And, you know, everybody knows Nephew Tommy from um, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Of course, yes. he's been a comedian for years. He does some acting, producing. Um, and now he's, uh, the last few years, he's been doing the Ready to Love show on OWN. So he's the host for that. And so, you know, he's he's been in the industry a long time. So it was definitely a privilege and honor for our radio broadcast to be uh, invited. Yeah. And so, of course, we did work the red carpet. So we met a lot of great people, a lot of the cast from Ready to Love. Um, season three and season four was there. Um, we met um, some of the ladies from the George Floyd um, Memorial Foundation. They oh, were wow. so gracious. And um, I, I was able to do some interviews with them. So that's on my social media platforms. That's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, I put it on Twitter. It's on all of our social media platforms. But, you know, I thank God that God has allowed us to have such recognition and such a platform that we're asked to go places, you know. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, how they know us, you know. <laughs> and you um, stole all the awards of the spin awards that you have. Right, right. But what I thank God for the most is um, sometimes we have events that we're invited to that that I might can't go to, but our co-hosts are able to go to. And I thank God for that because that's what I always wanted. I wanted to be able to have a brand that it wasn't always about me. Right. You know? So having a brand that represents a spirit of excellence and that when people see it, they'll know, okay, they mean what they say as far as serving God, loving on yeah. God, um, being positive, being inspirational. And um, I mean, shout out to my team. I love it. I thank God for them. Great job, team. Great <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I know that it's always important that you mention your team. Mm -hmm. So how was it just being able to connect with the people that you have on your team right now? You know what? The team that I actually have now um, they started with me when I wrote my first book. Um, only one person came on like toward the latter, like the last few years, but they yeah. all was there from the beginning when I wrote the book. And when we just went from the books to media, radio and television, they just came right along with me. And, um, two of them, Monica and Chandelin, Monica, I met in middle school. Chandelin, I met in high school, okay? Oh, wow. And um, uh, Latrice, we call her lady. She's one of the co-hosts on the radio show. Um, I've known her for years through church, from church. She was my father. My father was a pastor. And so she was my father's church secretary. And um, Minister Christopher Stevens, I actually met him at an event that I was hosting. And um, that that's such a great story. Um, 
I did television and it just didn't work out with the person that I was working with. It just, it just wasn't a fit. And Mm so I backed away and I met him at the event. And so we became Facebook friends and he and his family posted something that caught my attention. And the spirit of the Lord says, ask him to help you with your television ministry. Oh, and wow. Him, and he did. And we've been working together ever since, like from television, um, co-host on the radio show. He actually won an award, uh, co-host of the year. And, um, and uh, when I first started in radio, uh, I was invited to go to Lake Charles to cover um, Marvin Sapp's concert. And that's how I met Larry W. Robinson. He was there with Gospel Updates covering the event. And Larry is so outgoing. He asked me about my equipment and we just talked and hit it off. And he asked me to be a part of his Gospel Updates. We used to do Gospel Updates live every Saturday. And ever since, oh, okay. um, you know, he would help me behind the scenes, do graphic. He was one of those people that I can um, ask, you know, hey, does this look good? Does this sound good? And, you know. <laughs> We've just been working together ever since. So, I mean, I just thank God for the team. I, I mean, it was God, divine order. He strategically put together that team. And they volunteer, you know, and um, they all work in their uh, in their expertise, you know. And wow, so yeah. Something different. We actually, um, the, I have a quarterly magazine as well. And so last quarter's magazine was all about teamwork. So I spotlighted them in that particular issue with the idea as well of encouraging people the importance of teamwork. Oh, wow. That's amazing. See, I love that too, that you not only, like you said, even earlier, not only think of yourself, but think of other people too. And with your team and just knowing, hey, I'm loving you. I thank you for your support. I thank Mm -hmm. you for your hard work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. I love that. that, Thank you, team. Thank you, team. (laughs) Yeah, I appreciate you as well. <laughs> Keep my yeah. sister afloat. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. So, yeah. uh, Christina, it's been amazing, sis. I love the person that you are. You are, mm-hmm. like I said, you stuck like Gorilla Glue with me. Um, <laughs> I want, I want God to continue to bless you because I know how hard mm-hmm. of a working woman you are. Um, and my, I know, even with the, you being a teacher, oh my goodness. Yeah. My heart goes out to the teachers <laughs> my son actually graduates tomorrow thank yes. you Jesus, from high school thank you lord yes <laughs> so it's like i have accomplished the job yes i, yes. I mean i'm so grateful it's and a blessing. I know it is a blessing and uh he was just messaging me a while ago and just talking said hey mom i need money for this hey mom i, need, I was like oh lord when is it going to end it's never <laughs> going to end <laughs> Thank, you know, yes, I thank you for how an amazing woman you are, how you touch so many women lives and men lives uh, 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 as well. Continue to work hard. Sis. I know that it's, it's going to pay off in the end and Hallelujah. it's paying off right now. Yes. And you're definitely getting your flowers while you live. And I want to continue to, I'm going to send an offering to, to, the, to you as well for whatever you want to use it for. Oh, so, thank you. Um, I love you, sis. You be a blessing. Uh, continue to be a blessing and just be blessed right here on the Morning Jam podcast with your sister and your friend, Crystal Cross and Christina Lockett. Christina, before we go, let the people know where they can connect with you and what all you do. What all, all right. you do, but just connect with you. <laughs> One stop shop. You can just go to my website, christinalockett.com. My social media links are there. The books are there. The magazine is there. Just go to christinalockett.com. Thank you so much. You be blessed, sis. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast, tune in each week on thinkingoutloudnetwork.com. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share with your friends and family. Until next time, peace.